Hello and welcome to United Reformed Church in Somerville. It is the weekend of Sunday, February the 21st, the first week in the season of Lent in the year 2021. I just came in from outside where uh, the uh, crew from Paveright was taking care of our parking lot. Many, many thanks to Pete Stiers and his crew uh, from Paveright. There's no commercial involved here or whatever, just wanted to offer Thanksgiving where it's due and uh, thank them for helping us get ready for whoever comes this coming Sunday. We begin with these words, the peace of Christ be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. You are the one for whom I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Let us worship God.
this weekend, rather than offering a prescribed prayer of forgiveness that we invite everyone to pray, we're doing as we often do, and that is, well, so to speak, leaving that line blank in our bulletin or during our service, a time for you to bring before the Lord whatever you have to offer. The screen's gonna go blank now for a little bit, just for several seconds while we offer a time for you to confess your sins to God, asking God for forgiveness. Beloved, hear the good news. Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in glory for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, the new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ all your sins have been completely and eternally forgiven. Believe that good news and be at peace. I offer you now what some churches call a summary of the law, but we here at United call it the call to freedom because living God's way is the way to true freedom. And so, hear these words. What are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin continue to live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism in his death, so that just as Jesus Christ was raised by the Father, so too we might walk in newness of life. Let us so live and walk in newness of life in Christ. Our scripture reading this weekend comes to us from the gospel according to Mark from the first chapter. I'll be reading verses 9 through 15. This is a selection from what's called the common lectionary. So this passage, while it's not being read in every passage in mainline churches across the country, it is certainly being read in thousands and thousands of them this weekend. We lift up our hearts, waiting upon the Holy Spirit and listening for the word of God. Now in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. And then after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Here ends the reading of the Holy Scriptures. May the Holy Spirit bless our hearts with understanding. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ the Lord, when you read a good novel as you climb the slope of the narrative from exposition through rising action and, and you go through dialogues and events and all sorts of words and words and words, you don't always pick up the big picture of what's going on. You just ride along and then often it's, it's only after you've read the book that you get a sense of its impact and you go, oh, wow, wow, that was really heavy. It's only at that point that you can go back to, say, page 32 and 
notice how some important detail was being given to you and, and page 294 and say, ah, there was a turning point there. I didn't pick up on it before. And maybe page 412 and, and see a few sentences here and there that crystallize the meaning of the whole novel for you. You turned page after page, read word after word, but you only got the meaning of the details once you had finished the whole and then looked back on it. The Bible. The Bible is a little bit like that. Well, it's not a novel, of course. It's, it's lots of stories and poems and prophecies and whatnot. But amidst all its stories, it is also a story with bits that keep popping up again and again if you take the time to look back and find them. Today's story from the Gospel of Mark is one such place to look. It's a story, but it's actually three tight little stories jammed together really, really securely with one another in a way that they aren't put the, quite the same way in either Matthew or Luke. In just seven short verses, we read, Jesus was baptized, he was tempted, and he began preaching. Boom, 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 one right after the other. Now, where have we seen something like this before? something that might echo this in this big book full of books, the Bible. Well, we can never forget that Jesus and his followers were Jews. And so if we wonder whether this sounds familiar, we can't do any better than to go back to the foundation story of the Jewish people. You remember the story? It was the story of the Passover. They came through the Red Sea sort of like baptism, right? After that, they struggled for 40 years in the desert. A little bit like Jesus' struggle for 40 days and nights in the desert. And finally, they got to the promised land, the land of milk and honey. The time was fulfilled. Good news. Good news. Jesus' story was the ancient story in ways that go back and forth between the two if, if you just begin to tease it out just a little bit. Christ was the rock in the wilderness from which the water flowed, said the Apostle Paul. A lamb was slaughtered during Passover so that people could live. And don't we sing about the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world? See how these two stories interweave with one another? Now that could be something just sort of interesting-ish, something that you might pick up on in a beginner's Bible class at some point, except that it means much more than that. The story of Jesus doesn't just point backwards to the Exodus. His story, these three stories, point forward, forward to the early believers and century upon century upon century it goes, the story goes and goes until we encounter it today. Baptism, temptation, good news. Baptism, temptation, good news. Is it that difficult to see this as a template for our lives? We begin with this rock, solid, solid rock. God loved us first. That's what we say in our uh, sacrament of baptism. Before we could resist, before we could put up a fuss, before we could choose it or reject it, God set God's grace on our hearts the way a jeweler sets uh, the most precious diamond. You are my beloved son. You are my beloved daughter. And you had no clue that it was happening. This, this astounding gift that you were being given this gift that carries you through bitter passages of life and, and whispers to you in the dark night of your soul. You are beloved. You just are. You just are beloved people of God, made in the image and likeness of God. You are beautiful, majestic, a little lower than angels. This is the word of baptism, an undeniable truth that no one can ever take away from you. But it's not like that makes everything a, a big bed of roses for us. 
We began this week in my trials, Lord, walk with me. In my trials. In my trials, the song says, and if you've lived any sort of life at all, you've lived through trials. Maybe they were, maybe they were like Jesus' trials in some way. Maybe you've faced the temptation to be pulled away from the truth of who you are. Temptation to strike out on your own, to, to trust your own wits more than God. Or maybe you've been tempted to play a game of chicken with God. What if I take God's name in vain, even though mom and dad told me I should never do that? Will he punish me? What if I pour all sorts of, of harmful chemicals into my body for the sake of uh, temporary rush? Will God save me? What if I toss my integrity out the door for the sake of a few lousy dollars. Will God put my shattered self back together? Or maybe you've been tempted just to forget about the whole God thing altogether, just to forget about the God who claimed you in baptism, to, to stop talking to God altogether, neither to, to speak with, with, with joy and gratitude and thanksgiving and in love, nor to speak to God in anger, just, just cut off the relationship altogether. Give your heart over to petty prejudices. Devote your mind to trivial diversions, your body to the illusion of eternal youth. We don't just run across trials in the, in the sense of difficult times and loss. Sure, those are trying, but we're tempted as well. We are tempted every day to say, ah, forget it. This faith business, it's just a bunch of hooey. Why else do you think Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation? Other than that he knew we would need that prayer every single day of our lives. Don't lose the thread now. Remember what it was? Baptism, temptation, good news. Baptism, temptation, good news. And what good news it is. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the good news. Well, you've heard that before, I know. In fact, we ran across it just a few weeks ago. But it never fails in its capacity to astound. I guess it might be a little hard to envision that from time to time, but sometimes you have to think of the opposite of what was said in order to get the impact of it. Think of what Jesus might have said. He might have said, well, time has passed you by. It's too late. Whatever God there was in the world has already left the building. So do whatever you want. Doesn't matter anyway. There's not a thing worth believing in. <laughs> now you might think that's just a preacher ploy. I just made all that stuff up because Jesus didn't really say that, right? Fair enough, fair enough. But let's just be clear and honest about it. This bit, what Jesus might have said but didn't, it's a message that's right in front of us. It's as common as dirt every day. You only go around once in life, so you've got to get all the gusto you can get. Sound familiar? God is dead. Heard that one? If it feels good, do it. Imagine. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Bad news, bad news, bad news, B-A-D news. Jesus' story speaks good news forward into our story. The Spirit puts this story, this collection of three stories, into our laps on this weekend and asks, okay, Christian, what are you going to do with this? What are you going to do with it? So, well, I know it gets a little confusing. Turn over a new leaf by turning over an old leaf. Uh, look forward by going backward to Jesus who went backward to the Exodus. How is that turning over a new leaf after all? Well, just remember, just remember in the old, old Exodus story, the Hebrews 
started a whole new life in the promised land. New life, but with the same God who had made the heavens and the earth. In the old story, Jesus' life turned a corner from staying at his father's home where he was most likely a stonemason and now moving on to teaching and preaching and healing, offering life in God's name to anyone who would so much as touch the hem of his garment. Jesus, the son of the same God who brought the people out of bondage into freedom. And in your story, And in your life, the invitation is now to turn over a new leaf as a baptized child of God who has come through trials so that you are ready for, ready for, well, you have to fill in the blanks on that one. What new thing, what next thing is God making in your life? To what new stage of freedom? To what new land is God calling you the way God called the Hebrews into the promised land? What new words is God giving you? What do you have to offer? What healing can you bring? What life can you impart the way God spoke to Jesus and called him his own beloved son, called him into his destiny? It was the same God, but a new leaf. Same God, always pulling us forward, 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 forward. Friends, friends, turn over the new leaf in that novel of a life that you're living. Step forward into a newfound gladness. Move forward into a revival of your faith, your hope, your love. Walk forward. Walk forward in the light till your traveling days are done. Amen. Look unto me, 
your morn shall rise and all your day be bright. I look to Jesus and I found in him my star, my sun. And in that light of life I'll walk till traveling days are done. We come before God now in prayer, opening up our hearts to God and asking Jesus to walk with us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray you walk with us that we might walk with you. Walk with us, we pray, where even angels fear to tread. Our landscapes are white with the crystal of the snow Sidewalks are slippery and uneven. We lose our footing often, O oh God, as much in our spiritual lives as in the everyday steps that we take without much thinking about them. We know that beneath the snow, life is happening where we cannot see it. Beneath the ice lies a firm foundation. Walk with us, we pray, giving life, keeping our footing sure and steady. The brooks are locked, Lord, and the banks are frozen hard. We go thirsty often, as much in our spiritual lives as in the everyday course of life, without much gratitude for the gift of drinkable water. And yet, as the deer longs for the water brooks, our souls long for you. You are a fountain in the wilderness, a spring of living water. Lead us, we pray, beside still waters to keep our faith supple and strong. Walk with us, we pray, when we enter into the wilderness places of our lives. We walk out of doctor's offices with hard diagnoses. We walk to workplaces that we stomach for the sake of a paycheck. We walk round and round in our own homes for fear of viral spread. And yet we know you are the way to life that is life indeed, the way to a land of promise and hope, the way forward to God's new thing. Walk with us, we pray, that we might know we are never alone. On city streets, beside still waters, in the wilderness, we pray, walk with us, walk with us. Grant us the grace we need to live the words we say when we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
now, friends, go in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.